There are so many videos on YouTube about getting into medical school, the best ways to study and the medico lifestyle, but I guarantee that none of those videos will talk about the 13 things that I'm going to tell you today. Hi, I'm Laura, I'm a fourth year med student and today I'm going to be telling you the 13 things I wish I'd known before starting medical school. If you haven't seen my video about getting into medicine, I'll leave a link in the description below. Otherwise, we're just going to jump straight into the advice that I have for you if you're about to start medical school. First off, congratulations. You made it, you're a medical student now. But what exactly does that mean? Well, number one, it means you are going to feel very average. That's probably not something that you're used to, being that there is such a high academic standard to get into medicine, but keep in mind that you are now mixed in with a very intelligent cohort and statistically you're likely to sit somewhere in the middle of that. Don't let that worry you too much though, because as you'll learn later on, being average in medical school is still pretty good. Number two, all of your peers will be very smart and very capable. Don't get too caught up in the competition. Let me tell you that medical school is way easier if you and your peers work together as a team. At the end of the day, it really doesn't matter who gets the best results. If you can help each other out and get everyone to pass through, you, your peers and society will be better for it. So start a study group, give feedback on your friends' practice questions, do anything you can to help boost each other up. Number three, your grades will be different. Most people in my cohort were getting high 90s in high school or their pre-med degrees. Meanwhile, at the end of our first year, the average mark was 61%. And that's not because everyone slacked off. That's because med school is hard. So if you're someone that's results driven, you're going to need to scale back your expectations to prevent living in constant disappointment. Number four. Conceptually, the content is usually pretty okay, but there is a lot of it. So you're going to need to get very effective and efficient at memorization. Now, you might have heard of Anki before. Anki is a program that allows you to create your own flashcards and then employs spaced repetition to help you review them. Scientifically, this has been found to be one of the most effective forms of memorization. So if Anki works for you, great. If it doesn't, find something else that you can make work. Number five, you are not going to be able to learn all of the first year content in first year. Things like listening to heart sounds are an art and something that you practice over many years. So don't feel disheartened if you're not able to identify a murmur in first year. I promise you it will come. Number six, do enough but not too much. Don't overstudy. Don't overload yourself with extracurricular research projects. Don't overcommit to long surgical shifts. Med school is hard enough without adding more work on top of what is required. A good piece of advice I got from a surgical resident is sit when you can, eat and drink when you can, and sleep when you can. Med school is an ultra marathon, so don't start off sprinting or you'll burn out. Number seven. Except now that administratively, the healthcare system nor educational institutions are perfect. At the moment, I'm trying to resolve an issue where my uni has accidentally deleted an entire semester off my transcript. So I think that sort of proves my point. Number eight. People will judge you and your life choices when they find out that you're a medical student. Sometimes this is in a positive light. Other times they might roll their eyes and it's not so much. For example, some of my friends were catching the train to their hospital placements in their scrubs during COVID lockdown and this led to some less than warm comments being made by members of the public. Whilst I don't believe that's okay in any way, everyone will have different opinions due to unconscious or internalized biases and you have to accept that. Just make sure you don't let being a medical student become your entire identity, or you might find yourself lacking the resilience needed to shake off any less pleasant judgments. Number nine. The experiences that you have in medicine will fundamentally change who you are as a person. This is generally for the better. Med school is like a five year long seminar on empathy and communication and acceptance. You will become exponentially more emotionally mature. But keep in mind that not everyone in your life are going through these same changes. It's easy to forget that and become hyper aware of things that 
family or friends might say. So just take a breath and don't let it get to you. Number 10. You'll need to learn how to compartmentalize in a healthy way. You will see a lot of people hurting and loved ones suffering and people die. You can't become emotionally attached to every patient or it will compromise your ability to do your job. How would you comfort a grieving family calmly and gracefully if you're struggling to speak through your own tears. As a caveat to this, you will need to create your own healthy coping mechanisms and strong support networks for the times when you don't keep your emotional distance. Because we're human and it happens. Number 11. You'll need to keep a rota of a few appropriate stories to tell when someone asks what's the best or the worst or the coolest or the most gruesome thing that you've seen. We become desensitized pretty quickly so if you're actually telling someone the most gruesome thing that you've ever seen you will probably scar them forever so keep them relatively mild as a rule of thumb I also never mention anything mental health or pediatric related or anything to do with the anal passage just out of respect for confidentiality and privacy number 12 there will be times when you want to quit. I never thought I would have these feelings prior to starting medicine, but life happens and things change. I remember a time on the eve of second year when I almost called it quits. I'd had a brain infection during first year and as a flow on from that, I developed chronic fatigue. So I'd been sleeping 18 hours a day and catching every cold that went around for 10 months. And it was the night before second year started, I'd come down with another cold and I just thought to myself, I cannot do this. If I didn't make myself literally take it one day at a time, I don't think I'd be sitting here as a fourth year talking to you today. That being said, I am so glad that I stuck with it and I would encourage you to persevere through those feelings if you encounter them as well. You're never going to look back and regret becoming a doctor, even if it's not the career you have for the rest of your life. And finally, number 13. This one took me a while to wrap my head around and it is that you are never off duty. Yes, there's the typical, is there a doctor on the plane type scenarios but it's so much more than that. Med school gives you incredible amounts of knowledge and with knowledge comes power. Unfortunately, that is a power that you can never switch off. And because you have medical training, everyone around you always just expects that you're ready to go. My advice would be to set very clear boundaries with family and friends. Tell them that you haven't learnt about whatever the problem is that they're asking you about yet and that they should go and see their GP. There may be emergency situations where it's not possible to do that, but I think it's a good place to start in reducing your after hours burden. So that's it. The 13 things that no one told me prior to starting medical school that I wish I had known. If you want to hear more about how I got into medical school, I have a video on that too. But for now, that's all I have. So have a great day.